Tonight, hungry and on edge, clan members head out, but they sense they are not alone. lions bring down a powerful buffalo with terrifying ease. In the constant struggle for territory and food, confrontations are inevitable. In the South African bush, a clan struggles amid chaos. A brutal queen dominates them. Her excesses trigger a revolt. But violence still could consume the clan as the hyenas battle for their lives. as a hyena clown fights for its life. A clan of skilled hunters gathers to give chase. These spotted hyenas know their turf and exactly how to find their prey. roams the Charleston region of South Africa's Mala Mala Game Reserve. Their range is a harsh, unyielding landscape, dense with other predators. The Charleston clan answers to an adult female, Gork. In the spotted hyena's world, females control all aspects of life. As queen, Gork eats first. She outranks everyone, and she lets them know it. The other Charlestons endure their leader's wrath, and they must respond with submissiveness appropriate to their rank, or the clan's social order will collapse. At Gork's side is her lieutenant, Nikita. Nikita's in line to succeed the queen. She keeps her head down and takes the lead on the hunt. Nikita and the others work. Gork gorges, always eating more than any other clan member. Hyenas are much more complex and interesting and individual than people realize. I learned this from the Charlestons because they're a small clan and each member stands out.
But this small clan has problems. Over his years at Marla Marla, Kim has seen the clan shrink. Some spotted hyena clans run 80 strong. The Charlestons never have been that large. But one time, they did have about 20 members. Now, they number four. To learn why their numbers have dwindled, Kim decides to try to get as close as he can to the clan. He has to play by hyena rules and work the graveyard shift. And he faces an obstacle he can't control. Gork, the clan's queen. Gork's more aggressive than other hyenas I've been around. She'd had it in for me right from the start. If she comes near me, it seems more out of paranoia than curiosity. I just can't trust her. If Kim is to have a chance at getting inside their lives, he needs clan members' acceptance. A process that will take time. During the rains, life at Marla Marla slows down. little progress until an unexpected discovery <coughs> the clan has grown by two vital additions to the Charleston ranks if they survive <coughs> hyenas nurse their young but also bring them meat. This cub is so excited by the prospect of a meal, it's lost track of the food. The hyenas meet nightly at the den to bond before the hunt. Because it's so small, the clan has only one adult male. Kim calls him Russian. Greeting the cubs, he's the first to show deference. Clan females and their cubs outrank Russian. They make sure he knows where he stands. Nikita's brought home fresh meat. She fends off the other female's cub so her own can eat. It's a valuable lesson. Once hyena cubs join their clan's hunting forays, they must compete for every bite. As the clan feeds, Kim notices someone's missing. Where's the queen? Where's Gore? She should be at the den with her clan. Gork doesn't come around the den much. It's probably because she hasn't got cubs. And as far as I know, she's never had cubs. This is really unusual for a hyena matriarch. If Kim's right and Gork is barren, something's gravely wrong here. In most spotted hyena clans, the matriarch bears cubs more frequently than other females. Gork takes a queen's share of food from the clan but she isn't giving back by adding to the clan's ranks. Especially in a clan this small, every female should be bearing cubs. And there's another problem with gore. Spotted hyena matriarchs use aggression to remind clan members of their cases. But Gork's violent outbursts seem out of control. 
In the years that I've known Gorka, I've seen her really abuse other females, and especially the ones with cubs. Some of them have even left the clan. Not only is Gorka violent, she attacks for no apparent reason. Her disruptions are destroying clan unity, putting the Charlestons at risk. The Charleston Hyena Clan must protect its turf from incursions by other predators. Each evening, they go out on patrol, starting with a whoop that gathers the clan. The whoop is one of at least ten distinct calls spotted hyenas make. Each animal's whoop is unique, like a signature. While on patrol, clan members mark turf with a pungent paste from their scent glands. A single sniff may reveal the sex and even the individual identity of whoever left the mark. The Charlestons maintain a territory about 45 kilometers square on the south side of Marla Marla Game Reserve. To the north, a larger rival hyena clan stakes its claim. Marla Marla's hyena clans face a common threat. Other than man, lions are hyena's most powerful enemies. They trample hyena's turf steal their food and kill hyenas whenever they can. In the constant struggle for territory and food, confrontations are inevitable. Especially now that the wet season has ended. During the dry season, predator and prey crowd the same sources to drink and to feed. Tonight, hungry and on edge, clan members head out, but they sense they are not alone. lions bring down a powerful buffalo with terrifying ease. The clan keeps their distance. They're weakened and brutalized by their own leader. In a run-in with this pride, the clan would never survive. Clan members head off to hunt on their own. Nikita and Russian bring down an impala. But as usual, Gork demands more than her share of the meat. Gork is shoving everyone aside. Female hyenas can weigh 90 kilos, and a hyena can eat a third of its weight at a sitting. That means Gork can put away about 30 kilos of meat. Gork's reign as hyena queen continues to torment her clan. A 
At dawn, the others are still on the prowl, again reduced to scavenging. They find the buffalo carcass, which the lions left all but clean. Gorks away. This gives Kim a chance to edge closer. Nikita and Russian gnaw what they can. <laughs> Hyena's jaws can crunch down at a force of 70 kilos per square centimeter, enough to crack the hardest bone. Their digestive juices help them extract every bit of nutrition from even the oldest skeleton. This leaves hyena dung white and powdery. Nikita and Russian see vultures descending, a clue they use to target other predators' kills. In this case, a leopard's. The big cat wants it back. <laughs> Gork arrives late, looking for her share. She grabs the whole thing. For the others, it could be another day of hunger. Hyena clans can steal meals from leopards. The cats work alone. A leopard Kim calls Jalolo has hunted for years on the clan's turf. Plan, Jalolo is an opportunity of last resort. For Jalolo, the clan is the curse of his existence. A few nights later, the leopard takes down an antelope with spectacular flair. Hunting alone, Russian hears the kill. He takes a calculated risk that Jalolo is too busy to attack him. Russian's really clever here. He goes for the stomach while Jalolo is still strangling the impala. <laughs> but Jalolo isn't willing to watch his kill eaten from under him. Russian has to find a meal elsewhere. In the morning, Nikita finds the cat and what's left of the antelope. So near, and yet so far away. Nikita has good reason to be eyeing the carcass. Gork's lieutenant is hungry and tired, and trying to care for a growing cub. It's skin and bones again for the clown. <laughs> Nikita needs to keep her strength up. She settles in to suckle her little one, Nibbles. Among predators, hyenas are unusually devoted mothers. Nikita's milk is richer than any land mammals. Her cubs will suckle for about 40 months nine times longer than a kitten or puppy. As the cubs grow, they demand ever more food. This puts an added pressure on the clan. Nikita and Tandi must hunt more often. Hyena anatomy is misleading. This animal is not male. Before birth, female hyenas develop reproductive organs that look like a male's, but don't work that way. In fact, females give birth through this mock penis. The reason for this unusual physiology remains a mystery. A 
As the dry season drags on, Gork continues to torment Charleston Clan. <laughs> Gork always seems so tense, and she's either looking over her shoulder or going after someone. The only one she hasn't alienated is Nikita. Clearly something has to give. Suddenly, Gork lunges at Nikita. Then, she denies Nikita access to the kill. The surprise attack reduces Gork's lieutenant to groveling. Head down, ears back, emitting a plaintive squeal. <laughs> Things are spiralling out of control for the clan. The cubs are getting even bigger, demanding more food. Except for Gork, the adults are constantly hungry. Even worse, lions are treading all over the clan's turf. Night after night, the hyenas and the cats roar into the darkness. Lion scent is everywhere, putting the hyenas even more on edge. And at every turn, Gork snaps at them. A night later, Kim's fear comes to pass, when the Charlestons break into a ferocious battle. The clan is at war with itself. maims Gork. The clan has savaged its queen, all but amputating her left hind foot. They stopped just short of killing her, and as hard as that was, the coup did seem necessary. But now, Gork could die, right when her tiny clan needs every member. The death of the matriarch could put the Charlestons in even more peril. Days later, the hyenas are still recovering from the fight. The wounded Gork confronts her clan, but without her old bluster. has deposed its queen. After really hating Gork in her dominant state, now I feel sorry for her. A coup like this is a rare event among hyenas, and I'm not sure where it leads at Charleston. Nikita is next in line to rule. She may have to earn the clan's respect. Nikita takes her first step as leader when she gives a summoning whoop. But the others respond by coming to her side. A new clan order emerges after they hunt. Gork wants to feed. But the others won't let her in. <laughs> then Nikita bites down, sealing Gork's fate and her own. Now it's clear, Nikita is the new queen of the Charlestons. With Nikita in charge, the clan begins to work together. 
they're becoming a cohesive unit. But nothing is guaranteed. The regime change might make a difference to outsiders. A nomadic male named Snare has been coming around. He takes his name from the striking scar on his neck, left by a trap he managed to escape. Snare wants in with the clan. He senses Nikita might be ready to mate. He's nervous. She's not impressed. Rebuffed, Snare roots out a meal. A carcass the clan hid in the water. But Russian, the clan's male, brushes the interloper off. Snare will just have to keep trying. Midday is usually the safest for such forays. It's too hot to do much. While the adults sleep, a pan serves as a wading pool. Soon, playtime will end, and the cubs will have to live by adult rules and confront adult risks. Especially after dark, when the clan hunts. Tonight, as they start to patrol, the hyenas stop short. They hear a turf battle, a reminder of what's at stake in Mala Mala. The clan that lives to the north is going to war with lions. The Northern Clan is five times larger than the Charlestons and that much more powerful. But its members are up against an apex predator in a battle for territory. Hyenas aim less to kill than to intimidate with sheer numbers. They run off one lioness and tree another. The hyenas leave her frightened and alone. By morning, the female lion's pride is long gone. Finally, she risks a day's passage through hyena territory to look for her companions. The cats head south, toward Nikita and her clan. Russian catches an unwelcome whiff. Here is the cruel, vital truth of life in the bush. A lion pride has swaggered onto Charleston turf. Lions outweigh hyenas two or three times over. One on one, there's no contest. If the cats were to attack in force, the hyenas wouldn't stand a chance. They're outnumbered. In the heart of Charleston hyena clan territory, Lions fight over their spoils. 
à part son mari. The big cats dislike water, but not enough to keep them away from a meal. Once the lions leave, the hyenas sneak in. They feed in silence. One yip could bring the lions back. With Nikita in the lead, the clan seems more secure. But a small clan is still a small clan, and no match for lions. All the hyenas can do is dodge their enemies and focus their energies. They must add cubs to the clan. When Nikita picks a partner, it's a surprise to Kim. The new matriarch mates, no, not with longtime companion Russian, to father her next cubs. Nikita picks the outsider, Snare. I was stunned. I thought Russian was Nikita's guy. This may be Nikita's way of cementing her control, mating with an outsider and bringing new blood into the clan. If Snare has succeeded, in about 14 weeks, Nikita will bear cubs. <coughs> the deposed queen, Gork, is still advertising her woeful state, making so much noise, she attracts the lions. Pride of Eight pursues Nikita's clan. A week goes by. Still no nibbles. Kim fears lions might have got him. He's seen the big cats kill hyena cubs. Male lions have this passionate hatred for hyenas, and especially hyena cubs. They'll actually hunt them down and do them in, and just leave the little ones there to, to rot or to be left to the vultures. The clan may have suffered a loss, but its members still have to hunt. And tonight, the hyenas come upon a vulnerable enemy, a lioness alone on a kill. As if seeking vengeance, they take her on. The hyenas win the uneven face-off. But then instinct propels the clan to press on, taking the fight to their ancient foe. It's a risk for hyenas to confront even a single lioness but they're determined to put pressure on her to keep her out of their territory. They encircle the cat. The hyenas have the numbers, but a lion that has no way out is very dangerous. Russian and Nikita try a flanking attack. Even Gork joins the fight. The 
plan has sent the Lion Pride a bold message. But at a bitter price. The kid is in a really bad way. The lioness has, has bitten her in the rump and uh, the situation looks dire. She could have really bad internal injuries and even splintered bones. Many hyenas die from lion attacks, and the wounded matriarch could be one of them. If Nikita dies, the clan could self-destruct. In the morning, Kim Walliter finds Nikita, the wounded matriarch of Charleston hyena clan. Things look grim for Nikita, and her cub, Nibbles, is missing. It's a dark day for the clan. With her injuries, Nikita has little choice but to lay low. After a few days, she rallies. Considering how badly she was hurt, I'm amazed how quickly Nikita recovered from this lion attack and the way she could just get up and get back on the road again with the clan. With Nikita in charge, the clan lets Kim get even closer. He spends days patrolling with the hyenas. I feel really safe walking with these guys. They are my eyes and ears and, and my nose and it's, it's amazing what they're picking up. And there's, there's signs of things which I would never really know and I wouldn't know that they're seeing unless I was that close and intimate with them. And I think, you know, when they stop and sniff at something, I'll investigate it and see that the lions have been here or something else has been here. I can, can trust their reactions and they're going to tell me far quicker than I am where there's lions or leopards around. Here you are with a, a real predator who has the potential to, to kill anything almost and even me. You won't ever get this feeling walking with your dogs or whatever. You've got to walk with hyenas to understand it. But there's far more at play here. Lions still roam hyena turf at will. But they don't take every prize. The warthog in this hole means to stay there. And that offends the lion's pride. Drawn by the noise, here come the hyenas. Where the lions failed, Nikita succeeds. Scratches, squeals of delight, bring in a surprise. Nikita's cub nibbles. No one will ever know where he was, 
but he's returned, ravenous and unharmed. Finally, after all these months, Kim gets a chance to do what he's wanted, to use his hard-earned intimacy to follow Nikita on a hunt from beginning to end. He's hoping to see the Charlestons function as a hyena clan should. He starts this chase behind the wheel. The clan maintains a brisk pace. I'm always amazed at the stamina they have. They can just run all night. And this clan has actually learned where the Impala hang out. They'll go straight from herd to herd, like they've got a mental map of their territory. It's another example of hyena intelligence. With Kim shadowing, the hyenas pick up speed. and pull down an impala. Kim seizes his chance. And soon, he's in the thick of the action. The kid is a dominant female and she will control what, what goes on here. That's cork. That's cork making all the noise. They're just not letting her in. But they're letting me in here, which is amazing that they've allowed me right in with the clan. I've become a clan member with these guys, there's no doubt. They're not hassled with me, but gork, there's no way they're going to let her in here. Hopefully I'll always have better rank than gork, and even if not, I'm just a low-ranking male. And to some it might look like a, a real death wish, but quite honestly I feel quite safe. I mean, here I'm getting, the cubs are right on top of me here. Against all odds, a lowly two-legger has found a place with this predatory family. My experience with the clan is taking me far beyond anything I ever imagined and is really showing me what hyenas are in their true colors. This little clan is bouncing back from a tough year, working through their problems and growing in their ranks. The hyena's old leader, Gork, assumes a new role at the bottom rung of the clan ladder. Snare, the nomad, finds his spot in the clan too. He's fathered the clan's next generation. Nikita has two new cubs. Their Charleston clan's future. A future bound to be full of conflict. The Charlestons will always face battles for territory and competition for food. They'll always work hard to rule this patch of Africa led by their hyena queen.